Hey everybody and welcome to the center lane, the political discussion for those of us in the center who want our politicians just to get along, just to get something done for us. Okay, let's talk about the Iowa caucus last night. You already heard, I'm sure, Trump won. Trump won, Trump won, he won big, he won 52%. Uh, that's kind of a magic number there. Anything over 50% is spells doom for all other candidates that are in the race or not. Uh, let's talk about them one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, first off, Trump. I mean, first off, let's tell you this, only 110,000 people voted, which got me thinking about, wow, all the millions of dollars and the time spent. I knew the caucuses have low turnouts anyways because of the way they're set up. But 110,000 people, how good of a read is that on the pulse of the nation? We'll find out. But uh, as far as yesterday goes, the pulse of, the, of Iowa is definitely Trump. 52%. Um, that's a magic number. Anything over 50% really makes it. You wonder why the other candidates are still in there because that's that's a big one. If he does that again in, in uh, New Hampshire next week, I mean, I already think it's over, honestly, but it's still fun, right? It's still fun to see how it goes and follow that if you're into that stuff, which I am. Um, so he got his 52%. Now, DeSantis got to 21%, and I think Nikki Haley got just under 20 so he beat her by a percent, which... Kind of like what I said the other day, um, you know, they would be within a couple points of one another, but Trump would stomp them both, which is what he did. And then uh, Vivek uh, got 7%, which I thought was kind of what surprised me he got that much, to be honest with you. And he dropped out and immediately um, endorsed Trump. So, okay, so what does this mean going forward? Well, let's take it one at a time. First off, Trump, you know, in, in New Hampshire, he has a tougher road to hoe as far as at least getting to 50% because independents and other people can cross over and vote. Uh, that's going to help out Nikki Haley. She's at 19. She was looking at about around 30%, give or take. I haven't seen any polls since Christie dropped out, so I'm assuming a lot of that's going to go her way. I can't see those Christie voters going for DeSantis. Uh, but on the other side of the coin, uh, the Vivek voters are probably going to go to Trump. So that could be a wash. Um, DeSantis, of course, is claiming a victory. I, I could not believe I'm watching when they said he's coming in second. They put the cameras on him and he's like, oh, you know, like it was a victory party. Dude, you got beat by 30 points. Both of you did. You both got stomped. There's nothing to celebrate here, you know. What, you beat Vicki Haley by a percent? And I think it was like 1,500 votes. Because it's not that many votes. So uh, for all the money you put in there and, uh, you know, you need to get you need to get in the 30s and Trump in the 40s, at least say you're viable to have 21 percent versus 20 percent. And the guy's got 52 above you. And the guy who's most closely aligned with Trump, Vivek, just dropped out and endorsed Trump. <laughs> That's not clearing a path for you at all. That spells doom. Now, Haley has, you know, she wasn't all in in Iowa and she was respectable to be that close to him with not nearly the effort. I know they spent some money at the end there with ads and things, but I mean, she didn't put it near the effort that, that DeSantis did. Or was you know, she counting on Iowa? She's counting on New Hampshire to get some momentum. And then, you know, from there, she needs to go to South Carolina, her home state. And, ooh, that's a tough one because that's Trump country. But back to, back to, so DeSantis is sitting there claiming victory, basically, which, was, and my ticket's been punched. Only two of us, meaning him and Trump, are the only ones that got punched and on and on. And then he, the thing that really got to me since, you know, I can't, I'm sorry. He sets himself up for me. I just can't take it. He starts talking about the media. Oh, they tried to election interference, election interference. They called the race before people were done voting. Well, let me tell you something. I was watching my Bucks win yet last night, my football game, and the Bucks won. But um, back to him. I was bouncing back and forth. And um, your, your your logic, once again, is is twisted in your, in your behalf. And I guess that's how you kind of calm your donors down, the people support you. But... They didn't call that race to about 7, 30, 8 o'clock. Uh, so the caucus, and yes, they call early. They always call things early. When they start seeing results coming in, that's what news stations do. It wasn't against you. And oh, by the way, you know, how many people were jumping in their car at 7, 30, 8 o'clock to go and run out and caucus? None of them. You know, people have to be there at 7, so I'm told. You have to be there at the beginning. I mean, guys, you can come in late, but how many people are going to come an hour late that are going to go out and brave the cold in the first place? No one. So the people that are ever going to vote for you, we're already there. I'm going to vote for you. And by the way, if you can use that logic too, well, maybe some of Vic, Nikki Haley's voters didn't get out because of that. So it was a media against them too. Or maybe some Trump voters didn't go out because he already won. Why would they go out and vote? Because he's already got it won. So see what I'm going with this? It's like, you can't have it both ways, you know? It wasn't unfair and directed towards you, but he's going to make that the, his mantra, how the, the liberal left is out to get him. It's like, it's, it's not the liberal left. It's called math. 
you know, numbers add up. Numbers don't lie. And, you know, that you did what as well as you did. So, you know, you got to own it and try to do better. But personally, I hope he does stick around through New Hampshire just because it'll help out Haley. I'd like to see Haley, you know, at least uh, punch Trump in the nose a little bit. If, even if she doesn't win, just show some vulnerability. But, uh, I mean, he's going to do terrible in New Hampshire. I mean, he's not even – and he's going there later today because he's got a town hall. But he's going to South Carolina thinking he can get some inroads there. But – that's going to be a tough one. You got an incumbent, well, not an incumbent, but Trump is running as an incumbent. Then you got an ex-governor, Haley, who's going to do pretty good. You know, she'll do okay. And then you got you, all right? And uh, do you really want to set yourself up for that humiliation? That's the thing I think he needs to think about because the next two, uh, next two uh, primaries, he's going to do terrible. So how much of that do you want to take? And then after that, Super Tuesday, which... Haley, will, they'll, they'll both be out by then, or at least after Super Tuesday. It'll be just, Trump will be the last one standing. Now, here's the interesting thing to me is, like, how quick do you think it is before Ron DeSantis, when he gets out, endorses Trump? He's going to do it right away. Haley, I think she's going to get out, too. But will she endorse Trump? She, maybe way down the road, she won't just get out and say, okay, we got to get behind Trump now. I don't think she'll do that. He will, though, because he's worried about his future. And he still thinks he has a, a play for um, the uh, Magna people in 28. I said this the other day in my podcast, to say it again, it's like, I don't, 28's not looking good for him at all. I think some of these, uh, you know, the newcomers coming up the, and some of the people that ran before but didn't uh, come in with high expectations, like Haley, for example, she could run in 28 again because she came in low and worked her way up. He came in high and worked his way down. That's a tough one. That's a hard one to explain away for you, even four years from now. But, of course, it's a different world then. We'll see. You know, anything could happen, I suppose. But uh, so that's kind of how I see it. Then Vivek is out. Um, and I was thinking, okay, good. I don't have to listen to him anymore. But he's going to be campaigning with Trump in New Hampshire today. I was like, oh, my God. It's, he's gunning for some kind of something uh, in the cabinet if Trump wins. Um, or he's trying to elevate his podcast. Or he's trying to get a show on uh, Fox or Newsmax or something, his own show. I mean, it's all, it's for him, this is all about his you know, his ego. I mean, this was just a, you know, I, I give him credit for, now I can say his name. I never knew who he was. Now I do. So, you know, mission accomplished there. Everybody knows who you are, but they also know that you're obnoxious and you're, and you, you know, your uh, interpretation of logic is pretty much out there in my, in my opinion. People like him. Hey, that's fine. You like him, you like him. But um, anyway, it's mission accomplished for him, I guess. So that's where we're at. We'll look at it next Monday and see how that goes. I think there's going to be another debate between Haley and DeSantis this week. Why? I don't know. I, I, I don't see the point of that. And I'm, I haven't heard any follow-up on that. I know there's town halls with both of them. And perhaps there's going to be a debate against between them again. If I was Haley, I would just do this. I would ignore him. I would just go after Trump in this debate. I know Trump's not going to be there. That's the guy you need to beat. DeSantis is going to get a 7% if he's lucky in New Hampshire. There's no sense entertaining his nonsensical insults or whatever he's going to try to twist and turn on you. Just stay the course. Go against Trump. Ignore him. I think that if I was her campaign advisor and they're going to do this debate, if they're going to go through with this, I would say, you know, look, you know, honestly, I'm running against Trump. And every time DeSantis tries to get under your skin, say, you know something, Ron, I'm running against Trump. You should be too because he's winning. And if we, if either one of us is going to do anything, we need to go up against him. So you can say what you want about me, and that's fine. But uh, I'm looking at, I'm looking at the, you know, I'm not looking for the silver medal. I'm looking for the gold medal. So I'll leave it at that. And I uh, hope you guys have a great day. Oh, this is the, my front yard. Take a look. Oh, yeah, nice day. It's kind of rainy down here in Florida, actually. But anyways, hope you all have a great day, and we'll talk to you soon.